it's going to be done by someone who's been in Toastmasters for six months and works in the IT industry. He has a lot of experience with computer systems. And when he's not busy ensuring that your email will work any way you are at any time, then he likes to ponder about life and philosophy in general and what it means to be human. And so he's, as he works his way to the lectern, I want us to warmly welcome with his speech, The Choices We Make, David Mudge. Thank you for a great introduction there, Mr. Postmaster. Fantastic. Welcome. When I was young, one of the things I used to read a lot were Choose Your Own Adventure books. How about a show of hands? Anyone here read, read one of those? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, well for those who are not aware of what they are, basically they started off with a story. And they would lead to an event which would give the character a different choice to make as to which path they should take. But at this point, the book would become interactive, actually allowing the reader to choose what the character should do next. So they make the choice, and the story goes down that path. The book would then go on you know, with many more different events and choices to make, leading to many different possibilities and endings of the story. Tonight, I'm going to bring a Choose Your Own Adventure book to life, right in front of your eyes. I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to let you as the audience decide how it should unfold. So I'll call out when someone needs to make a choice. So let's start. It's a beautiful morning in South Africa. I work as a pilot. I deliver planes all around the world for customers. Now today there's two jobs to do. One will take me to Christmas Island, and the other to Hungary. Now both of these are places I've never been to before. So, which one should I choose? Che. Hungary. Great. So I decided to go to Hungary, and I'm pretty excited about that because I've always wanted to go there before. So I deliver the plane. Then I've got a bit of free time before I have to fly back. So I can have a look around a bit. But not long after, it becomes evidently clear that Hungary is just not the place that I expected it to be. I'm expecting to see people roaming the street with a knife and fork, looking for food, really hungry, but <laughs> disappointing. If I'm so wrong about this place, it makes me wonder, should I still go on that trip to the Virgin Islands? <laughs> anyway, I guess I should have a look around what there is to do here. So I wander off to the Telical Tourist Centre. I emerge 15 minutes later the picture of a typical tourist. In one hand I've got my guidebook, and the other a map. So I decide to go off to this famous local village. <coughs> so I go off looking for transportation. So I wander down and I think that local tour operators can see me coming from a mile away because pretty soon I have two of them coming up to me asking if I need help. So I tell them where I want to go. And I have one of them who says he can get me there by boat. The other by a bike. Which one should I choose? Nick? Boat. Boat. Wow, I can get on the boat, cruise down the river, just relax, just kick back. So off we go to the docks. But what I'm expecting to see is a speedboat. Turns out to be this two-person <coughs> kayak. And I need to help paddle the thing there. Anyway, so I asked him, how far is it? Well, he said, it's about 25 minutes, but it depends how good you are at paddling through rapids. Well, I suddenly realised what happened the last time I tried paddling through rapids. But it's too late, because we're already heading down the river. We go on and around the river, and we come to this local selling food out of their boat. It's all like a floating market. Well, I realised I haven't eaten for a few hours, so we stop. And the lady there, she's selling bananas and mangoes. Which one should I eat? Keon. Mangoes. Mangoes. I buy a delicious mango. <laughs> and as I bite into it, 
I'm just so glad that I chose this one now because it's just the most juiciest, the best mango I've ever eaten. And to tell the truth, I think the tour of was having a bit of a laugh about these rapids because so far the river's nice and peaceful. So yeah, this day's turning out pretty good now so far. When we go on again, come to this small island, which we must go around. I'm wondering which way we should go, left or right? Bill? Go right. I go right. I've always had a lot of luck choosing that direction, so off we go. But I soon start noticing that the river is speeding up and a faint roar of rushing water and this thumping sound. Or is that just my heart beating a little louder? We hit the rapids and I try with every ounce of my willpower not to do what I did last time. But it's too late. I see this huge wave and the adrenaline kicks in. Oh, we can take this. Off we go. Splash. The cold, freezing water has found us. Like an obsessed ex-girlfriend. And it is time to get out, to bail out as the river, the boat goes along down the river. As we make our way to the bank, I think, why didn't I just stay back at the airport? I apologise to the tour operator for what just happened. But he just sits there and laughs at me. Well, what's so funny? Well, he said, I have to confess, I'm not really a tour operator. You see, I was just on my way home and I needed someone to help out of my boat. <laughs> you look like someone that I could help get me to do it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's your car, I'm sorry. Uh, well, that's your fault, you know, you've lost your boat now. And he said, you know what, that's current for you. So, I tell you what, I did promise to get you to the village. So, you remember the guy back at the, the, the town with the bike? Well, he released a tour operator. So, I'm going to come, get him to come and take you there. So, I sit and think for a minute about how this day has turned out. You know, if I had chosen to go on the bike in the first place, I wouldn't be sitting here dripping wet. But anyway, not long after the guy shows up with his bike, we go to the village and have such a great time that I forget all about the boat incident. Learning this new culture and discovering a new place. Well, I guess this adventure is something to laugh about and I've got a pretty good story to tell now. Isn't that what travelling is all about, having these different experiences? And I guess with the choices, choices I did make, I did get to taste the world's best mango. So here ends my little story and my little experiment. I had a fun time reading these books as a kid, getting to choose how the story would fold out, and I realised though that these books came with an underlying message. They hinted how life can be in the real world. And they showed us that we're always going to have choices to make, and we have that freedom to choose which one we think suits us best. These decisions we make aren't always going to turn out how we want, Sometimes they will. But we can still hold the hope that no matter what choices we make in life, eventually things will work out one way or another. Thank you.
I was very interested in this, that you could choose your own adventure book. So he told us, really, the explanation. That's why I said choice and adventure. So here we are, we've opened with you could choose your adventure book. So that explained the purpose. So tonight he said that I am going to choose my adventure. And away he went. Now we're starting into the body of the speech. And what happened tonight with this type of adventure, it was giving the audience, or specific members of the audience, a choice. So when he nominated a person to say, am I going by plane or am I going by <laughs> boat, etc., or something like that, he was choosing a member of the audience. And guess what? This is total audience involvement because when he was going to choose the next person, nobody knew who was going to be chosen anyway. So we're all sitting there, full attention, can't take our eyes off the speaker at all because who's he going to choose next for the next part of the adventure? And we get the choice. Now I think the audience really enjoyed being part of the speech. I mean, we're in it. We're in the middle of this adventure and we were choosing as we went along. So we went from adventure, we went to Hungary, the country, not Hungary, we went mangoes and everything else. That was going great. So it was a step-by-step -step adventure as we got into it. Right, the conclusion. He told us what he was telling us, really, at the conclusion. And we always had choices to make was the ending. Eventually, things will work out one way or the other. So, basically, that rounded the speech off. I think in the middle of the speech, though, I think we needed just a little bit more emphasis on the choice part of the speech <laughs> to, to bring us in line with that's what the spirit of the speech was about. That was the general purpose of the speech. Choice, 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 choice. So that could have been just emphasised a little bit more. Even when he used his... Well, I was watching him and he had his hand in his pockets and I thought, well, it's a no-no for a speech. And then up comes a map and a travel guide and puts it on there. So his props worked magnificently when I was going to have a go at him about the hands in the pocket. <laughs> so he had roving eye contact tonight. Just a little bit of distraction with, with the eyes down on the notes that he had, the little pocket notes. Not too much, but just took a little bit away, took a little bit away from the gestures as well at the same time when you're hanging on to notes like this, you can't expand and expand. So it was clear diction, diction tonight, very simple words, almost a conversational style of speech tonight. Really enjoyed it, and it certainly fulfilled the objectives of a general purpose in the speech tonight. Mr. Toastmaster.